Thank you, Lord. Thank God you to take somebody on that door for me back down. Amen. 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 Such a wonderful God. When praises go up, blessings come down. Hallelujah. When praises go up, blessings come down. When praises go
when praises go up, blessings come down. Amen. 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 When praises go up, what happened? Blessings. Healings come down. Hallelujah. Preachers, you can come to the poor people you desire. Amen. Hallelujah. When praises go up, deliverance come down. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm so glad to see you once us here today. Thank you. Amen. Let's deal with it. Let's thank God today. Thank God for everyone that made it today. I'm glad to be here in the house of God today. Yes, God has been so good to me. Yes, Amen. I'm so glad he blessed me. He delivered me. Yes. He's done all these mighty things for me. And I'm grateful to be in the house of God today. Can I get an amen? Amen. Let's go to Galatians chapter number 6, verse number 6 and 7. Amen. Galatians chapter 6 and verse number 6 and 7. God, we ask that you open up our understanding. As we open up the word of God today, God, make us good ground that we may hear the word of God, understand the word of God, Lord, receive the word of God, Lord, do the word of God, be patient, hallelujah. Somebody say, be patient, Lord, and produce what? And produce a harvest, God. Galatians chapter number six, dealing with the day with a seventy call, because, reason why judgment falls. That's all right, don't it? Because. The reason why sometimes judgment falls. Yeah. Amen. God is a master conflict resolution. He's all of that in a bag of chips. Yes, he is. Jesus is all of that. But also God is a master of conflict resolution. He's also a master of uh, basically root cause analysis. That's the reason why we go through what we go through. That's the reason why things happen to us. Amen. That's the reason why the blessings of God fall. And that's the reason, oh my Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. How judgment falls sometimes too. Amen. That's reason. Amen. Thank God for DJ being in the house today. Amen. Hallelujah. He about to go Navy. Hallelujah. He about to go Navy. That man after my own heart, he about to go Navy. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Galatians chapter number 6 and verse number 7 and 8. The Bible says, be not deceived. God is not mine. Yeah. For whatsoever man sow it, that shall we also reap. Amen. And he that sought to his flesh shall the flesh what? Reap what? Corruption. But he that sought to the spirit shall what? Of the spirit reap what? Everlasting life. And the Bible verse number nine, I know y'all been hearing me sing for the last probably month or so every now and then hitting, them, hitting on the end, backing off from it. But the Bible says, and let us not be weary. <laughs> let us not be weary in well doing. For in what season? In due season. It just ain't coming today. The Bible said in due season. The Bible said it ain't coming tomorrow. In due season. In due season. Hallelujah. In due season we shall reap if we not faint. If we faint not. Somebody want due season to come today, baby. It don't happen like that. Amen. I know God is able to bless you instantaneously. Spontaneously. And sometimes God will bless you like that. But let me let you know what I found out. Let me let you know some of y'all. This is what I found out in the process of time. Sometimes it takes time for God to be to bless people. Amen. And I found this out too. That usually in the process of time, there's no such thing as an overnight sensation. The singers you see out there singing, you see they are they blowing up over here. Baby, they've been working behind the scenes probably for five years, ten years since they was in church, since they was leading out to a duck, and you ain't see them nowhere. But all of a sudden, look like they blow up out of It took time to be blessed. Amen. It took time to go far. It took time to get the blessing of God and make it rich and add no sorrow. Right. Amen. Amen. So be not weary and well doing. There's a reason why God does, somebody say what he does. There's a reason why God does what he does. Amen? Let's go to 2 Samuel chapter number 21. Amen? And verse number nine, 1 through 9. And Lady Jones, Lady, Lady J, can you start reading that? First Samuel, I mean 2 Samuel chapter number 21. Verses number 1 through 9. It's a lot of reading today. This is going to be some teaching today. I may get a little preaching every now and then, but baby, this is going to be some teaching today. Dealing with what because, the reason why sometimes judgment fall, and sometimes the reason why blessings fall too. Go ahead. 2 Samuel chapter number 21, verse 1 through 9. 
Amen. And there was a famine in the days of David, three years, year after year, and David inquired of the Lord. Wait a minute, stop right here. If David is a man after God's own heart, if he's a man after God's own heart, and it didn't say nothing to nothing about him following about Sheba right there, it said in the process of him just taking over the kingdom, he was king, and they were still going through. Somebody want that blessing right now? There's a reason sometimes why we go through. And that was the reason. Keep reading. Keep, 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 keep why? And the Lord answered it. It, it. it is for Saul and for his bloody house. Because what? he slew the Gibeonites. Yeah. <laughs> the leadership, sometimes current leadership, and sometimes past leadership, can cause the land to suffer. Amen. The leadership of your pastor can cause the flock to suffer. If I'm not walking right, if I'm not living right, if I'm not walking holy, if I'm not talking holy, it can affect the whole flock. Amen. If the man ain't walking right in the man, it can affect the whole house. Amen. Amen. Yes! Amen. That's right. It's the truth. And God, at that time, No Saul was dead. Amen. Is that a just God? You gotta understand, God needed something dealt with. That's right. The sin gotta be dealt with. Thank God for grace and mercy. We ain't upon the Old Testament. Because it was an out for out two for two. If you messed up on the old covenant, somebody had to pay the price. That's right. Mm-hmm. Y'all looking at me funny. When David sinned with Bathsheba, That's right. instead of killing David, he said, a child, that which you conceive, that I did not ordain, I don't have to cover. Yeah. That's right. That which you conceive in sin, Amen. that I did not, oh my Lord, that I did not ordain, I'm not obliged to cover it, is going to die. So David did that get away with adultery. Somebody had to pay the price. For David's indiscretion. Somebody had to pay the price. And God said, since I didn't know it, since I didn't appoint it, I ain't gonna bless it. Keep reading, please. And the king called the Gibeonites and said unto them, now the Gibeonites were not of the children of Israel. Wait a minute, 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 wait a minute. They weren't even of the children of Israel. Right. But because God, because Saul had treated them so low down and dirty, my, my, my. he made Israel pay the price for a couple of years. And God knowing David being a man after his own heart, he's gonna ask why. Amen. I know David. He's gonna, it seemed like it took him a while to get to get wise to wait a minute, wait a minute. We going through, and I'm in, and God is leading me, and God is talking to me. Why are we still going through? Sometimes that's a reason. Keep reading. But Keep reading. of the remnant of the Amorites, mm -hmm. and the children of Israel had sworn unto them, and Saul sought to slay them in his zeal to the children of Israel and Judah. In other words, Saul broke covenant. See, the sin problem is that it was not because God loved the Amorites, because he didn't. It's because they had made a covenant with the Amorites not to slay them. And Saul slayed them. And I slew some of them. Go ahead and read. Wherefore David said unto the Gibeonites, What shall I do for you? And wherewith shall I make the atonement that ye may bless the inheritance of the Lord? Saul messed it up, but I gotta make it right. I've gotta make it right. Keep reading, please. And the Gibeonites said unto him, We will have no silver nor gold of Saul. I don't want your money. Go ahead and read. Nor of his house. I don't want nothing in his house. Neither for us shalt thou kill any man in Israel. And he said, What ye shall say that I that will I do for you? And they answered the king, The man that consumed us. And that devised us against us 
that we should be destroyed from remaining in any of the coast of Israel. Wow. Mm. Keep reading. Let seven men of his son be delivered unto us. We only want seven men of his sons to die. Now, ain't that reasonable? Yeah. Ain't no telling how many people saw that kill. They said to try to make it right. We need a blood sacrifice. Jesus. Keep reading. <laughs> and we will hang them <laughs> up unto the Lord. Now, know say our hearts don't. No, you, you know, just stop right there. <laughs> when Hitler, and some people to this day don't believe the Holocaust took place, and the ones that was promoting that atrocity. Oh yeah, some of them was caught in hunger. That was due justice. Some of them thought they was getting away. They built houses, they changed their identity, and they tracked them down yeah. over the years and said, you gotta pay. So I don't feel no sympathy for any Nazi that killed a Jew and stood by Hitler when he was doing so. Amen. So, and guess what? Because judgment sometimes got to fall. Keep reading. Unto the Lord and give her a Saul whom the Lord did choose. And the king said, I will give them. But the king spared Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan. That's two Mephibosheths. That's right. Mephibosheth, it was just a name. Don't get it twisted. The Bible is not contradicting itself. He spared Jonathan's son, Mephibosheth. Yeah. Yeah. Keep reading, please. The son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, because of the Lord's oath that was between them, between David and Jonathan, the son of Saul. You got to keep your word, baby. Amen. God said, I'm going to do it. I'm going to spare him because David and Jonathan made an oath. So Jonathan is going to get spared. I mean, the, the machine step, step is going to get spared. Amen. Even though he was a seed of Saul. Keep reading, please. But the king took the two sons, Rizpa, the daughter of Aya, whom she bare unto Saul, Armani, and Mephibosheth, and the five sons of Micah, the daughter of Saul, whom she brought up to Adriel, the son of Barzillia, and Metholite. Now, one, uh, was Micah the one that said, saw David dancing before the Lord? That was David the wife said, uh-uh, I ain't gonna have no children for this man. He's too veiled for the Lord. Now, is that the same one? Because he was cursed. Huh? She got hurt. But check this out. And one other thing, was she the one that Saul gave to somebody else? Jesus. Saul, in his rage against David, gave her to somebody else. Yes. And she could see children. Yes, she did. But she was actually David's wife. God is not obliged to cover anything that he did not have. Don't you ever get it twisted. If God didn't ordain it, he's not obliged to cover it. If God didn't endorse it, he's not obliged to keep it. Keep reading, please. And Rizpah, the daughter of Aya, took sackcloth. That's enough of that. That's enough of that. That's enough of that. Did we stop? That's good enough. What number? What, 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 what verse is that? I'm on 10. That's enough. Let's go a little further. But see, that was a reason why there was famine in the land. And the famine wasn't going to get dealt with until he dealt with that sin yes. that Saul had done. Amen? Amen. What did he deal with? Amen? Amen? Amen. Let's go a little further. Let's go to Numbers chapter number 1 through 8. Numbers chapter 12, verse 1 through 13. Numbers chapter 12, verse 1 through 13. I like this. When I read this, Lord, it just makes you think. It's, it, God got a sense of humor, but in some ways, something God do for sure ain't funny. This ain't one of the funny things. But it lets you know how we act as people. That's right. And how God responds the way we act in our flesh. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Look like y'all going to start reading. And Aaron spake, and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman. Jesus. Whom he had married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman. Why the Bible got to say you? I pointed out the reason why they're talking about it because he married this woman. Yes. Now, don't say 
Then he married her and she was black. That's why they was talking about it. They don't say that. A lot of times we preach that, man, I may have even said it too. Moses married a black woman. Well, I don't know. Maybe all Ethiopians ain't black. But the ones I've read about, they're black. I could be wrong. So they begin to talk about it. Wait a minute. Couldn't he marry somebody in Israel? Why ain't gotta go and get this black sheep over there? So they start talking. My Lord. And it was something to talk about. <laughs> you were preaching, you had to go get Hootie Mama from the street. Yeah, you had to get Hootie Mama. Jesus. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> and she going to step in here. This is going to talk. This is going to talk about you mm -hmm. and your mama, too, and your daddy, the head, too. Mm -hmm. They're going to talk about you. Ain't nobody in the house that he could have married other than this woman here. Amen. Shall we go home, please? And they said. So it looked like it was justified. <laughs> it looked like it was justified. It didn't say they was talking about him because he married a black woman. Yeah. They was talking about him because he married an Ethiopian woman. That's right. Amen. Yeah. That's right. And the Bible reiterates that again. <laughs> the reason why they was talking about him because he married somebody outside the tribe. Yeah. Jesus. <coughs> uh, Keep reading, please. And they said, Have the Lord and he spoken only by Moses? Jesus. Moses ain't being little God. Mm. Mm -hmm. He can't be little God. I know God ain't talking. Because Moses ain't picking right. Keep reading. Have he not spoken also by us? Mm -hmm. And the Lord heard it. Oh, Lord. We act as though God can't hear. Why is it that we act like God did? And no, 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 no. It can say Moses heard it. That's right. It said the Lord heard it. Lord. The Lord heard your conversation, baby. Jesus. Who cares whether or not Moses heard it? Moses probably don't even care. That's my brother, so they're going to talk about me. I don't care. That's right. <laughs> Moses cared about it, didn't care. Yeah. He still was married. That's right. 
And the Bible don't say he put her away. Come on, that's right. Only time he put his wife away was to handle God's business. Yeah. He left his wife with his father-in-law. That's right. Amen? Amen. But he said he divorced her. Yeah. He read, please. And he said, hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him. Uh-huh. And will speak unto him in a dream. Yes. My servant Moses is not so. Mm -hmm. Who is faithful in all my house. Oh, Lord. Did you not know Moses was faithful? <laughs> now, God took the time to educate them of who he was talking about. Jesus, God. Yes. Not only is he your blood brother, He's the most faithful in my house. Yes. See, y'all never saw him that way. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You never saw him that way. You just saw him as being whatever. Yes. That's my brother. I can talk about it. Yes. Right. Keep reading, please. And with him will I speak mouth to mouth, mm -hmm. even apparently, uh -huh. and not in dark speeches. Yes. And the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Keep reading, please. Wherefore then were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? And whoa, 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 whoa. Saints, we live in a day and age where people aren't afraid to speak against you when you walk at home. They don't care whether or not you're living right. They don't care whether or not if some tragedy happened to them and they call you for prayer, they still going to say something against you. So I don't understand the sake of the living God trying to imitate the world, trying to walk like the world, trying to talk like the world, trying to trap like the world, trying to adapt the middle of the world because the world ain't stopping you. Amen. So why are you trying to be like them?
Last I checked, the Lord been taking care of me and my family very well. Mom did very well. Very well. I mean, God I ain't, I ain't going without nothing. And, and, and if I feel like I'm short, somebody will bless me with this. I'm blessed with all of them. I can say, without really saying right like now, God says, show the blessing that you never seen. Right. Because I dare to do what God say do. Glory Keep reading, please. Yes. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them, and he departed. And the cloud departed from off the tabernacle. Wait a minute, before he left, he left a gift to show them that he wasn't pleased. Oh, that's right. Now, some gifts God gives are good. Now, come on now. Sometimes God can be some good gifts. My Lord, God can bless you. Yeah. Yes, Indeed. Yes, yes. But this is the departed gift that you don't want. Keep reading. Oh, yeah. And the cloud departed from off the tabernacle, mm -hmm. and behold, Miriam became leprous. Why is snow? What? Why did it snow? Why did it snow? Why did it snow? Why did it snow? Say, why did it snow? Why did it snow? Why did it snow? Why did it snow? Keep reading, please. My God. <laughs> and that whiteness was because of holiness. <laughs> that whiteness was leprosy. Oh my. Keep reading, please. And Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. And Aaron said unto Moses, Alas, my lord, I beseech thee, lay not the sin upon us. Wait, 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 wait. Did he say upon us? us. Aaron said that now? Right. So Aaron's in repent mode? He was wrong. He went from talking about Moses and repenting. Oh, Lord, help us. Don't let it sin upon us. I thought it was just conversation. Oh, Aaron Levin had ever said when he saw what God was doing, he said, this is not only talk, this is sin. Keep reading, please. God, God. That's the reason why God does what he does. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. And my, my Lord, I beseech thee, lay not the sin upon us, wherein we have done foolishly, and wherein we have sinned. Let her not be as one dead, of whom the flesh is half consumed, when he coming out of his mother's womb. Keep reading, please. And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, Hear her now, heal her now, O God. I beseech thee. I beg you, Lord. And the Lord. Wait, wait, wait. I beg you, Lord. Yes. I know they've been talking about it. Yes. yes. I know they've been probably saying something out of the hill. Now, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, That's Lord. what a person do. That's right. If your enemy is hungry, you feed them, baby. Right. 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 If they call you, give them something to come up with. Yes. Keep reading, please. And the Lord said unto Moses, if her father had but spit in her face, uh -huh. should she not be ashamed seven days? How many days? Seven. One, two, three. Keep reading, please. Yeah. Let her be shut out from the camp seven days, and after that, let her be received in again. And Miriam was shut out from the camp seven days. And the people journeyed not till Miriam was brought in again. She had to bear her sins for how many days? Seven. She had to think about what she said for how many days? Seven. She had to be set out in the camp, left by herself for how many days? Seven. Seven days. She was out there, outside the camp, alone among the wild animals. Because if he was leprous, you ain't nobody supposed to come near. Right. You right. Whenever they come near, you supposed to say, unclean, unclean, yeah, unclean. That's right. Unclean. That's right. Huh. Hey. She was shut out of the camp. That's my seven God. days. Seven days. That's right. Please read. And afterward, the people removed from Hazaroth and pitched in the wilderness of Paran. Mary never should have went through that. That's right. Oh no, y'all. You know, cause and analysis, root cause and that was no reason for Mary to go through what she went through. That's right. If she would just kept her mouth on Mary and his Ethiopian wife. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Everybody saw it now. Hey, no God. Amen. First Chronicles <laughs> first, first chapter 13, verse 1 through 4. First Chronicles chapter 13, 1 through 4. First Chronicles chapter 13 and verse 1 through 4. I'm there now. I'm going to go ahead and read that because I'm, I'm right there. I'm, I'm, I mean, amen. Amen. 
I'm right there. I ain't no use me being late. I can read something. <laughs> That's right. Amen. <laughs> and David yeah. consulted with the captains of thousands and hundreds and with every leader. The Bible said, the more to you can counsel to make what? Make war. Yeah. Make your decision. And David said unto all the congregation of Israel, mm, if it seem good unto you, and that it be of the Lord our God. Let us send abroad unto our brethren everywhere that are left in all the land of Israel. And with them also to the priests and the Levites which are in their cities and suburbs. That they may what? Gather themselves unto us. And let us what? Bring again the ark of our God to us. For we inquired not at it in the days of Saul. And all the congregation said that they would do so. For the thing, for the thing was right in the eyes of all the people. Oh Lord. I ain't gonna read all of it. They gathered all the people together. He's going to dance for the Lord. He's going to be doing this. He's going to be throwing down and bringing this ark of God up. He's going to have somebody carrying the ark. And they're going to reach out and they're going to they're gonna hit a stump or something. They're going to reach the touch the ark and they're going to die. Yeah. Yeah. Right. They said, wait, 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 wait. We're we doing something wrong. Yeah. The first thing I saw, even though David was a man of the God of the heart, David didn't seek the Lord. That's right. It never said David. He said, if it seemed good unto the Lord, he said, I sought the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. If it seemed good unto the Lord. A lot of things seem right. Let's go to Proverbs chapter number 14, and verse 12 through 14. 13 through 14. Let that jump please. Proverbs 14. Yes. 12 through 14. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Even in laughter, the heart is sorrowful. And the end of that mare is heaviness. Keep reading, please. The backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways. With his own ways. That was just extra. But I want to mention this. The word of God is so clear and pristine as a bell. Since God said it once, he says the same thing in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 25. That's right. The Bible says in the mouth of two or three witnesses, they will work their staff. Yeah. Precept got to be upon precept. And line got to be upon line. That's right. God felt this was so important that he said it twice within two chapters of point. That's right. That's right. He said, there's a way it seemed right unto man. Mm -hmm. But the end of all is the ways. all the ways of death. That's right. David looked like he had it going on. But apparently he didn't seek the Lord. Proverbs chapter number 3 and verse 6. Proverbs 3 and 6. You would say something like, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Right. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. The Bible don't say David done none of that. And because he didn't, here we go. Because the reason why judgment falls, it appears because he didn't seek the Lord. Yeah. And not only did he not seek the Lord, Oh, let's turn over another chapter. Let's turn over another chapter. Amen. Oh, Jesus, help us, Lord. Amen. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, Lord. Proverbs chapter 106, verse 32 to 33. Proverbs. Mm -hmm. 106. Psalms. 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 Psalms 106. 32 to 33. Thank y'all. I got a, I got a church read. Some people read church here. To read the word here. Psalms 106. Mm -hmm. And what verse? Verses number 20, 32 to 33. 32 says, Then angered him also at the waters of strife, mm -hmm. so that it went ill with Moses for their sakes, mm -hmm. because they provoked his spirit, so that he spake unadvisedly with his lips. They did not destroy the nations concerning whom the Lord commanded them. 
but were mingled among the heathen and learned their works. And they served their idols, which were a snare unto them. Okay, now I just want to interject this real quick. Then I'm going to go back to David real quick. First uh, Chronicles chapter number 15, to tell you around by verse number, I mean, um, 11 through around by verse number um, number 14. Amen? I mean, 15. See, they made David so upset, he spoke it about me with his mouth. Now, don't let nobody ever get you upset that you speak it about with your mouth. David is going to miss the promised land. I mean, not David, but Mo uh, Moses is going to miss the promised land. That's right. It's Moses that's talking there. Amen? That he's talking about right there. He spoke in advice. He called him for brother. God said, speak to the rock. Don't talk to it. That's right. He said, should I fix rock? Man? What are you rebels? I know. Man, just go and smite the rock. And he got out of God's will. That's right. He going to miss the promised land because right. of the people. Because you can miss the promised land, what God has promised you because of people. That's right. You don't ever let nobody, your boss at work, your co worker, your family, cause you to miss God. Don't ever let them do that. Don't let people rob you from the blessing of God. Now let's go back to David. First Chronicles chapter number 15 and verse 11. Please read. And David called Z Z Zadak, Doc, of Abathar, the priest, and for the Levites, for Uriel, Asiah, and Joel, and Shemaiah, and Eliel, and Amenadab, and said unto them, Ye are the chief of the fathers of the Levites. Sanctify yourselves, both ye and your brethren, that you may bring up the ark of the Lord God of Israel unto the place that I have prepared for it. I don't want you just bring it up if you ain't sanctified. No, he told him, now you got to sanctify yourself. That's right. Mm -mm. That means to tell me everybody that's in the priesthood ain't what? Sanctified. Don't you ever let nobody see you. Everybody in the priesthood ain't what? They ain't sanctified. God made a, oh my, my David made laid a mandate upon these priests, sanctify yourself before you touch the Holy Spirit. God. That's right. Before you touch the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. I one time tell the brother, he said, uh, ain't him mind being intimate with his wife before he gets to preach. Jesus. That's your business. Amen. But in the Old Testament that we can glean from it, the Bible said, come not at your wife. Oh, Jesus. That's the word. Before you want to step up in here and give a word sometime, you need to have some consecration right. away from your spouse. Now, it don't say you're going to get slow by God. If you don't, I'm just saying we can glean from it. Yes. Come on, some self control here. Yeah? Come on. <laughs> this ain't the law. I ain't saying it's got to be here like this, but I'm just trying to say the man of God said, I don't have to do what I want to do with my wife. I'm going to go over there. Yeah, don't be just getting up out of bed with your wife and want to come and lay your hands on me. <laughs> Leave it alone, Pastor Joe. You pig it. Keep reading, please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, sir. Go ahead and read. Uh-huh. Yes, Lord. <laughs> yes, Lord. <laughs> Y'all last name. It seems funny. <laughs> See, people do all kind of ungodly stuff and then want to stand before God. People. My Lord. <sighs> you have them separate yourself. You are not sanctified. And you have the right to disagree with you because everybody don't agree. Ain't no way in the New Testament said you gotta do that. I say we can sometimes glean. So I ain't say we gotta do it. We can sometimes glean. Amen. Keep reading, please. For because you did it not at the first, the Lord our God made a breach upon us. For that we sought him not after the due order. So the priests and the Levites sanctified themselves to bring up the ark of the Lord God of Israel. 
What is we got out of order, David said. The priest may have not been sanctified. The person that may have touched the heart may have not been sanctified. So they died. I know people will always say God is saying God yesterday they never tell when it comes to something like this, people hear that. That's what stuff in the Old Testament, it behooves you to follow even today in the New Testament. I say it behooves you to follow. There's some ritualism, there's some laws that they had of cleanness. It's, it behooves you to follow even amen. today. Amen. Medical science can also back up some of that too. Can I get an amen? Amen. That's right. Why do you think the doctor said, when your wife have a child, you ain't got no business talking to the first season? That's right. Come on, pal. Where do you think they got that junk from? It ain't junk, it's Bible also. And the medical science gleaned from it. Yes. And they still instruct people today. Once your wife have a baby, this week, try to leave alone for a while. That's right. Her body got to come back under the natural. Go through a process of change. Right. Leave it alone, Pastor John. You just pick it. Somebody don't judge me on that. So, so judge me. That's right. Pray for me while you judge me. Amen. Come on. Amen. Amen. Proverbs chapter 107, verse 17. Psalm, Lord, now mercy. Psalm chapter 107, verse number 17. Jesus, help me. Please. Psalms 107. What verse? 17. Fools, because of their transgression, and because of their iniquities are afflicted. That was long. Their soul abhorred all manner of meat. Wait, and wait, stop there. That's enough of that. But see, the Bible says fools because of their transgressions. Because of their transgressions. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <sighs> and because of their iniquities are afflicted. Yeah. So some things we go through is because we have a foolish nature. Yes. I'm talking about us. We do certain things, things that we do, and can provoke judgment upon us because we're doing it in folly. Right. In folly. Yeah. In folly. Yeah. Come on, scripture. I'm going to leave it alone. Amen. Yeah. Psalm chapter 107. Did we already read that? Psalm chapter 107. Yeah, back to 107, verse number 11 <clears throat> through 14. Because they rebelled against the words of God, and contemned the counsel of the Most High. Therefore he brought down their heart with labor. They fell down, and there was none to help. See, today we're dealing with the reason why affliction comes, the reason why judgment comes, the reason why poverty comes. You don't want to pay tithes and offering. You know, one preacher once told me, he said, I, the New Testament don't speak against tithes and offering, and, and don't, don't tell you to pay tithes and offering. But why did Jesus say they pay tithes and come and, you know, admit? He said, these things should you have done and not left the other stuff undone. That's what Jesus said. Amen. I'd rather go on what Jesus said than what man said. Amen. So we wonder why we're going through financially because we ain't giving to God the way we need to. Mm-mm-mm. I ain't gonna hear a pen drop. I know y'all, y'all tired pairs. Hey, God, hey, the ones that, I'm, I'm for that. But the ones that don't give, you think you're gonna keep on being blessed. Yep, Lord. Yep. That was Jesus. Right. Amen. Did we did we all do 14? Read, please. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death and break their bands in sunder. When they humbled themselves and cried, God blessed them. Yeah. The reason why God blessed them because they humbled themselves. That's right. See, God ain't schizophrenic. You do right by God, you draw me to God, God will draw me to you. Yeah. I mean, he, he He's like a parent that's got to put chest tied on their children. Yes. We still love the children. Yeah. You still love your dinner tonight. I just told you what, but guess what? The dinner is right there waiting on you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to stop feeding you. Amen. I'm not going to stop loving you. That's right. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Please ask 8 verse 11. We're almost done. I bet y'all say, yeah, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Because nobody want to deal with judgment, y'all. Y'all, I can honestly tell you the truth. People just don't want to deal with judgment. We don't want to 
want to, but we don't want to see our God as being a God of justice and judgment. Read it. Because sentence against an evil work. Because sentence against an evil work. It's not executed speedily. It's not executed speedily. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Oh, yes, judgment is coming to you. If you don't repent. Yeah. When you start preaching like this, people get upset, they get mad, they think you're trying to put judgment on. I'm not. I'm not, y'all. See, the reason why some men treat their wives like trash, because they really don't believe that God don't judge them. That's crazy. They really don't believe that you don't matter man of God. They don't believe that God is really going to judge them. The reason why the wife treats the husband like trash is because she really don't believe God don't judge her. The reason why we treat our children like trash, we don't believe God is going to what? Judge us. The reason we treat each other like trash in the house of God is because we don't believe that God is going to be a God of justice. That's right. That's right. Amen. Read it slowly. Because sentence against an evil work is not what exercise speedily. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is full set in them to do evil. I got away. I got away. Nobody knows what I do. I got away. God just gives you space to repent. That's right. See, we mistake grace for space to repent. Don't you ever mistake God's grace and space to repent as being a license to sin. That's right. I've been cheating on my income tax for the last 20 years and don't nobody know about it. And all of a sudden, the IRS finally get around to your case. I'm going to charge you all the way back to 2000. That child you say is yours was never yours. Oh, no. Can I get an amen? You've been paying that child on your income tax for the last 20 years and you owe us $100,000. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. I'm saying now, I'm feeling the Holy Ghost. <laughs> yeah, it's time to start speaking in tongues. Oh, yeah. You better start praying in the Spirit real quick. Child support. I tell uh, y'all know I tell these women, love your husband, love your husband, stay with your husband. But if the man ever decides to walk out on you, yeah. it's cheaper to keep her. Yeah. That's right. Amen. That's right. Stick him for every cent he got. Make him so poor he can't pay attention. And I do have the Holy Ghost. If you think you're gonna drop you enjoy your new boot. And your new house too. And your new car too. I'm gonna be in the house with you. Hey! Woo! I'm happy for you. You got that job that pay a hundred thousand. Woo! You be dancing like that. Woo! Glory! She praying that you get that job. Let him get it, Lord. Let him have it, Lord. He need to make as much money as he can, Lord. Root cause analysis. 
Pastor, I know you think about that. Boys will be boys. Once you start making babies, you become a man. You know? Because sinners against an evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is filled, is fully set in them to do evil. Since they think they're getting away with it, they're going to keep on doing what they're doing. Yeah. Amen. Romans chapter 1, verse 19. Root cause and the reason why God do what he do. Romans chapter 1, verse number 19. Amen. I know it's been a long message today, but I'm about to land this plane and stop. Amen. 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 God's a God of love. He's a God of compassion. He's a God of mercy. He's a loving God. Don't you ever think that we don't serve a loving and compassionate Lord. But just because he's loving and compassionate, he also has a low tolerance of fire. Mm -hmm. Don't you ever get it twisted. He has a low tolerance for fire. Amen? Verse 19, Romans chapter 1, verse 19. Because, and, go ahead and read. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, but God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. Wait a minute, go back to verse 17. For, when, for, for what, where is the righteousness? Okay, okay, um, okay, verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men which hold the truth in unrighteousness. You can have the truth, you can hold the truth, but you ain't living right. You can be led in church and ain't living right, and you hold the truth in unrighteousness. And you think God ain't gonna judge that? Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. Why? For God has shown it unto them. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Keep reading, let read John verse 20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Here come that because again. Go ahead and read. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful. And became vain in their imaginations. They weren't thankful. See, you are, have you ever walked around somebody that's full of the Holy Spirit? Everything wrong. God bless you with a 75 husband. You ain't good enough. You ain't good enough. You ain't making no money. God bless you with a 75 wife. She ain't good enough. Yes. God bless you with a job to be work on Sunday. That ain't good enough. Amen. Complain. Yeah. Problem. Wake up in the morning complaining. Go to sleep complaining. Wake up complaining. He has given you and let you eat the good of the land and we still complain. Right. Please read. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man. They thought they had it going on. They thought they had the wisdom of God because God was showing them stuff. Oh, because God was showing them stuff. And they did have knowledge and God was talking to them. But they became unwise. Keep reading, please. And to the birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator. Who is blessed forever. Amen. Keep reading. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. See, sometimes, y'all, this is called perversion in the house of God. Yeah. Don't you ever think that you can be in a perverted spirit and think you're in the right place with God? You praise his two left shoes. Yeah. Now, you're out of your mind. That's right. There's some churches out there that do kind of all kind of ungodly stuff, 
and endorse all kind of ungodly lifestyles and thinking that God is with them. You better be careful with your this girl. And likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of women, burned in their lust, one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of the error which was meet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, yeah. being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, mm -hmm. full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, yeah. without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implaceable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Jesus. Not only do not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. God didn't just send his judgment on these folks because he wanted to. They was maintaining the righteousness of God in unholiness. Yeah. They wasn't holy, y'all. Yeah. They knew the word, they knew it was right. And they decide to walk contrary to it. Yes. That's a dangerous place. Oh, you, 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 you're walking on shaky ground. Come on. You're sitting in slippery places. Yes. Dangerous place to be. Lord have mercy. Matthew chapter number 13 and verse 58. Amen. Matthew chapter 13. I know a lot of scriptures today. Chapter 13, verse 58. I'm going to start with verse number 56, please. And his sisters, are they not all with us? Whence then have this man all these things? And they were offended in him. But Jesus said unto them, a prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and in his own house. Yes. And he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. What's the reason why God won't do no works? Jesus won't do no works there because they didn't believe him. That's right. And when they, see, it wasn't that he was unable to do it. He, he just can't work in unbelief. Yeah. God don't want to work in unbelief. He's not going to work in unbelief. Amen. Last scripture, Mark chapter number 3, verse 28 to 29. We're done. Mark chapter number 3, verse 28. Verily I say unto you, all sins shall be given unto the sons of men and blasphemies, yes. wherewith soever they shall blaspheme. Yes. But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost have never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation. Why would you say that? Can you read this? Because, mm. they said, he had an unclean spirit. There came then his brethren and his mother, and standing without, sent unto him, calling him. What could they say he had an unclean spirit? He said, watch it. You want to blaspheme the Holy Ghost? See, that's what happens when we talk so much. You can only get in trouble with blasphemy. We got all of us. Amen. We don't want to blaspheme the Holy Ghost. All these bow, all eyes closed. Amen. Preachers, anyone that you proud? Somebody's not king.